So the Oscars are going to be broadcast tomorrow, and in honor of that, I thought I would read, I have a list of the top 10 Oscar winners of all time. It was a list put out by Vulture, where they ranked, I believe there's something like 90 Best Picture winners, and they ranked them from the worst to the best. Uh, it was funny because very, 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 very close to the worst was Crash, which was a famously, famously bad movie to have won Best Picture. Um, there were a couple other really funny, really funny bad Oscar winners. Dances with Wolves was pretty low down the list. I've never actually seen Dances with Wolves. It's a little too long for me to, to ever engage in. But these are the 10 best. And it's a fairly good list. There's a couple I disagree with, but overall... Um, I thought it'd be interesting to read them out. So, number 10, the 10th best movie to ever win Best Picture, according to Vulture, is Amadeus. I kind of agree with this. Uh, I don't know if a lot of you have seen Amadeus. It's really pretty good movie. It's a solidly good biopic. Um, they do a really good job of, of underscoring the drama between Salieri and Mozart himself. Apparently, that might not be a real thing. Um, yeah, it might have been something invented to make the biography more interesting. But the, the story that they tell about Salieri's envy of Mozart and how he's the patron saint of mediocrity compared to Mozart um, and blames himself for the death, it's, it's a really pretty well done movie. And, you know, the soundtrack, it's a, good, it's a good introduction into the music of Mozart. So it's a really solidly good biofilm. Number nine, Gone with the Wind. Gone with the Wind is an absolute classic. I watch, try to watch it every Thanksgiving. It's a terrible book. <laughs> it's kind of a trashy novel, but they turned it into like, it's like The Godfather. They turned it into a, a cheesy, uh, trashy novel into like one of the great cinematic experiences of all time. It's really fun. It's a really solidly good film. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Um, number eight, I totally disagree with. Uh, number eight is It Happened with One Night with Clark Gable and Claudette Colbert. If you've never seen it, uh, probably a lot of people listening to this haven't seen the movie. Honestly, you know, don't bother. It's considered a classic. I saw it a long time ago because I've more or less seen all of the, you know, um, almost all the classic movies. Maltese Falcon. There, there was a period in my life where I kind of made a point to check out everything that had a really, really good reputation. And this is one of those that people talk about in hushed breath as one of the great movies of all time. It's really not, honestly. I can see why people like it and it's charming and it's enjoyable, but it's really not a classic along the lines of something like The Maltese Falcon. So I don't agree that that is number eight. I don't think it should be in there. Number seven, uh, it's a totally different story. Number seven is one of the absolute fantastic masterpiece movies, Schindler's List. I think that should actually be higher. Schindler's List, I, th I saw it in the movie theater at the time I was dating a Jewish girl, and she was shattered. If that's an indication of how good of a movie it was, she was absolutely shattered by that film. She couldn't even communicate afterwards for about an hour. Um, it's such a powerful movie, and I when you see it, People knock it because of the beginning and the end where Steven Spielberg kind of goes into cheesy Steven Spielberg mode to make it not quite so um, heavy or whatever. But when you actually see the movie, if your first experience of seeing the movie theater, it's I really can't even explain how powerful of a movie it is. It's one of the best cinematic experiences I ever had in my life. It's I think that should be higher on the list. Most all the other movies here, I, I've never seen them in the theater. That one I saw... Um, when it came out and like I said my girlfriend at the time was completely shattered couldn't couldn't even function for two hours it's, it's that powerful of a film and the performances in it Amon Girth uh, Ray Fiennes made his reputation with that performance that's one of the great cinematic performances him is uh, shoot her no do it here in front of everybody it's fantastic movie can't say enough good about it now number six again I disagree with this Lawrence of Arabia it has the reputation of being one of the great masterpieces of all time. It is so overrated. I can't. Somebody, somebody out there who really likes movies is going to disagree with this. You know, I gotta, I gotta be honest. It's really overrated as far as I'm concerned. It's not Gone with the Wind. It's beautiful to look at, cinematography-wise, visually. It's stunning. It's one of the best shot films I've ever seen in my life. 
It's uh, David Lean directed it, and it suffers from the David Lean problem. The other, ironically, the other, or uh, the other really, really stunningly beautiful film that he made was Dr. Zhivago. Those are two of the most visually beautiful films you will ever see. But in terms of the quality of it as a movie, it suffers from David Lean. He's a, it's a very static, long, um, it's the exact opposite of a Steven Spielberg movie. It just doesn't move. It's, it's, it's really overrated. You know, he's, he sets up shots that are like still photography and then has people kind of act in them in ways that's, you know, I, I'd be interested in other people's comments on it. If you're of the younger generation, you might think it's completely dated. It has the reputation of being one of the great masterpieces of all time. I totally beg to differ with that. Number five, On the Waterfront. On the Waterfront is a, is a really solidly good film. And I'm relatively certain it holds up for today's audience. Unlike a lot of classics, um, it's mostly about Marlon Brando's performance. It's one of the great um, cinematic movie performances. Um, it would probably hold up as as something that you can see and enjoy just as a movie. It's it's that well done. Um, Malaya Kazan, I'm pretty sure that was the first movie he made that won an Oscar uh, for best... Uh, I'm not positive on that. But it's a really solidly good film. It's very entertaining uh, as just a movie. And it's very enjoyable. Uh, number four, Godfather 2. Stone Cold classic. Absolute classic. Um... Again, this is one of those movies it's hard to say enough good about. I don't quite love it as much as The Godfather, which is easily one of my favorite films, but it's definitely number four is probably where it belongs, maybe number five. Maybe I put Schindler's List at number four. Um, you know, just the Robert De Niro as the, young Do uh, <laughs> as the young Corleone is in and of itself worth the price of admission. It's brilliant to watch. There are some, some things about it that are just absolutely fabulous, near picture perfect. Number three, All About Eve. This is a absolute classic. For a long time, this was my favorite movie. Betty Davis, um, it's about a social climber and this aging star fending off this social climber, Eve. It's really a brilliant film. Um, they don't write like this anymore. The, the, the writing in the movie, the lines are unbelievable. Um, it's written. It's it, written by a famous Hollywood um, playwright, or a, who was a playwright at the time. And they just don't write movies like this. It's so well written. It's so fun. It's so entertaining. Um, for a long time, it was my favorite film. Which brings us to number two and one. They are both equal in my eyes. They are my two favorite movies, and I think they are the two, probably the two best, arguably the two best American movies ever made. Godfather and Casablanca. They have Casablanca at number one. Um, both of these, what's interesting about these movies is there's a, an experience in life where someone tells you, like, you know, you're, when you're growing up, you're... You, Someone will say, this is a classic, or this is something you absolutely have to read, or this is an album you absolutely have to listen to, or this is a movie you absolutely have to see. And, you know, most times, or oftentimes, that experience is disappointing. Someone will say, like, you got to read Catcher in the Rye. So you're all excited when you read Catcher in the Rye, and you're kind of like, well, what's the big deal? Um, you know, that did not happen. It's a much more rare occurrence what happened with Godfather and Casablanca is there every bit as good as everybody has ever said that they were. They completely live up to the hype. And if you haven't seen either of them, you know, do yourself a favor. Casablanca is one of the great American movies. It's, uh, I saw it, you know, it was, it's such a well-made, such a fun, enjoyable, um, really just a great movie to watch. And ditto for The Godfather. The Godfather is probably the best American movie ever made. Um, so that's the list. I kind of agree with the list. I would put Schindler's List up a little higher. I'd probably put Schindler's List at number four. And I wouldn't have it. It happened one night on there. And I wouldn't have Lawrence of Valeria on there. I'd put them in maybe the top hundreds, maybe. Um, but that's it. So watch the Oscars tomorrow. You know, should be a terrible show. I doubt I'll watch it, to tell you the truth. I almost never watch the whole show. Um, this year they don't have a host because Kevin Hart, there's a whole whole ordeal where he got he said made homophobic remarks one time 15 years ago in a twitter feed or something like that 
And now they're not going to, the Oscars are going to be without a host for the first time or, or for the second time. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see. I am guessing, if I had to predict, Roma will win Best Picture. I haven't seen it. My wife says it's really, really, really good. Um, that's probably most likely to win Best Picture. Some of the other movies on there, Green Book I saw. Green Book is actually a very good movie. Um, I think The Bohemian Rhapsody is up for Best Picture. It's a much better movie. I'll probably do my own, just a, a video just on that movie. Because it was actually really pretty good. It was a lot better than I thought it would be. But that is all for now. Enjoy the Oscars, and uh, that is all. I'm